Hello. Uh, review. Yes. So, I was going to do this really complicated review involving about seven figures, but I can't find one of the ones and I can't be bothered. So I'm going to go for something slightly different. Transformers Prime R.I.D. Beast Hunters Deluxe Smokescreen. As far as I'm aware, the only release of Smokescreen? I, I could be wrong, but I believe. And here he is with all his Beast Hunters gubbins. You get... Sort of... Pseudo Harpoon Launcher Gun. And this thing is designed that if you fold it round you can twist one thing into the other and it becomes like a nest and you can wrap it round and it's stupid. And it's this really plain sort of rubbery blue plastic slightly sort of greyish metallic but nothing special. Now he also comes with in the same sort of rubber armour straps that sort of go around the front uh, this was, again, the same sort of bland blue colour. So I got some black ink and just went around it and then rubbed some of it off. Just to make it look a little bit more tarnished, because, you know, it's supposed to be armour, it's supposed to be detailed and, you know, pretty. And it's a very sunny day, so uh, you have to forgive me, I'm trying to adjust the lighting. But I uh, tell you what, let's close the blinds a bit more. That's opening it, I'm an idiot. That's the blinds actually closed. Huzzah. Right, okay. And this just untabs from the side there and there and just sort of folds off. Yeah, it's kind of neat, I suppose. Then you get the plain car itself. 38, nice reference. Kind of prettyish. Uh, missing a lot of paint details from what I can tell from the uh, cartoon. Yeah, but he's, he's quite nice, he's quite detailed, he's got a nice clear window with a hand. Um, but no, he's alright, he's quite nice. Uh, doesn't fit together amazingly well, as you might notice around the sides here and here. But it's um, a very finicky transformation. So if I'm going to be lifting this thing up, I'll just drop something, alright. Yeah, alright, okay, okay. I'm only lifting this thing up for transformation, I might as well raise the camera up. Okay. Now, this first part of the transformation involving the bonnet, or hood if you're American, the bonnet and the top half of the car is finicky. So, bear with me. You need to split the bonnet and the headlights and stuff from the front bumper. And for some reason now I'm burping. Hooray! Right, so get that loose, get loose. You can come loose now. Come on, come on, don't fight with me. Yeah, and it comes up on a nice double hinge in there. You can come loose now, don't fight with me. There's no reason why you shouldn't. There we go. Okay, so they're loose. Now, unfortunately, due to the transformation, they overlap, which is why this is so finicky. We've then got to make sure the side so door windows are loose because they tab into the sides of this top section. Then you gotta get this top section and kind of I didn't like that noise. Um try and wriggle it loose. So it comes up. There you go. I need this piece loose. Okay. Okay. Now we split the bumper by basically folding these bits forward. Because they just about tab into each other there. See any of this? So we'll fold these out to the side. Fantastic. <sighs> okay. We need to, like I said, this transformation is a nightmare. So bear with me. We need to split the arms. So, because look, arms. Look at hand. Split the arms. Pick one, usually the one with the bonnet on top, like that. Bring it up to here, and then this whole assembly, including the wheel, turns on a ball joint in there. See that? That ball joint in there. 
Eh. I told you it's fiddly, don't look at me. So we'll get this. That was noisy. Uh, get that bomb. Uh, yeah, we'll get the bonnet on top of the car. Okay, like that. So we get this up there, and again on that ball joint in there, rotate the whole wheel assembly around. Hooray! We'll then take this piece, flip it through with the head on it, all the way over the top. And it stays around there ish. I'll show you how to gauge that in a second. Because we've got to get these side pieces loose. And these side pieces sort of come up slightly. And they are attached to this Y shape apparatus here, which is on a hinge here. And sticking out from there is this piece with a groove in it, which goes into that slot there with a line down the middle of it. That groove for that line. But we'll just fold in the windows first, because, you know, that makes it cooler, right? So, um tell you what, while we're here, there are these tabs sticking outside here. And they go into gaps between the uh, wheel spokes. So we'll try and line that up and tab it into place. Okay, and that lines up and taps into place. Okay, I told you, this is finicky, and it's only this middle piece. Once we get this middle piece done, we're laughing. So we'll bring, again, we'll bring this up and we'll tab it into that bit there. Uh, just for people in the know, I am currently a third of my way saving up for... Well, it's a better phone, frankly, but it'll have a better camera and stuff on it. So, uh, you know, stop moaning. <laughs> I'm a third of the way. It's going to be quite a, an awesome thing compared to what I've got. So, as I did there, without even telling you, raise this up on a hinge just in there. Bend the... Well, bring this to the side, bend the elbow, and bring this around. And I've just got a bit of clear plastic on my knuckle, on my finger. See that there? That ain't good. Because these hinges are all made out of clear plastic. Hmm. Bring it around. Still, it hasn't fallen out, so everything's fine. Because of all this kibble and gubbins, you can't actually get the arm perfectly straight, because there's too much behind the arm, but it's fine. Make sure the shoulder pads are down, shoulder pads are down. Because of the way the wing section attaches to the head flap, that tab should be perfectly lined up for that slot for when this folds up. I say should, and kinda, let's wriggle it a bit. There you go. Chest plate in, uh, chest plate in place, hooray. Rotate the waist, push on the spoiler to, oh no, hang on, bring up this, part first, the sort of middle of the bumper and license plate and all the rest of it. Now I'll push on the spoiler to rotate it down to reveal tootsies. Split the legs and last thing to do is just rotate this piece here on the inside. Uh, it's got a big hinge in there. Rotate that around and it tabs in in the there you go. And we'll do this one as well. There we go. And uh, ignore the light. There we have smoke screen in robot mode. I've got to do a size comparison, didn't I? Oh well, who cares? It's uh, Beast Hunters Deluxe. It's roughly that size. You'll be fine. And yeah, he's good. He's quite a pretty figure. Very pretty, in fact. I do like this robot mode. Um, nice bend at the knee, hips, blah, blah, blah. These shoulders are, shoulder pads are a little bit obtrusive, but you can move them out of the way, so it's fine. Uh, you can't build, uh, bend the arm perfectly straight, as I previously said, because of all this gubbins. Yeah, all that stuff under there. But, it's pretty good. And again, you've got all this stuff. So you can give him the funny net thing, if you must. And this, which actually comes into play again. Uh, right, okay. There are these tabs sticking out the side here. They go into the holes in there. And the rest of it sort of drops on over the head. I can't remember if it tabs in somewhere. Yes, it does. 
uh, these slots here where my finger is, see that? Go on to that bit sticking out there, that bit sticking out there. So we'll do one side first, we'll push that into there. That goes into there, and that goes into there. Is it in? I don't know. Um, Blucius, behave. Uh, that goes on there, does it? Yes, just about. And then this sort of, they sort of go onto those. Not amazingly well, they kind of, or am I supposed to do it first? I can't remember. But whatever, it kind of ends up like that, which ain't great. Now, because I felt really let down about this weapon, and you can take the harpoon out, slide this off the actual missile, and stick it back in, but then you've got a really long, really stupid looking missile. I actually found, uh, this is from a car boot or something, it's second hand. It was a um, uh, first, uh, like the old Chevrolet Bumblebee missile launcher. Didn't have a missile, it was just this. So I glued a straw into it, try and give it a gun barrel. Unfortunately, it's hollow straight through, but whatever. And now he's got a little pistol. Huzzah! Because, you know, why not? Kind of looks like Soundwave shoulder cannon, doesn't it? Uh, whatever. So, yeah. He's a neat enough little fella. Ah, oh, dear. I like it. I'll be honest, I kind of like it. Uh, he's daft, he's silly. And I'm slightly nervous about this uh, clear plastic on the arms, because like I say, a bit dropped off on me. But it's still holding fine, and you know what? He's quite nice. Very, This whole chest and arm and stuff transformation is a nightmare. But if you aren't completely clumsy, it's perfectly fine. Um, he just needs more detail. I don't know if there's a Takara version or something, but that I'm getting just is amazing. Uh, they also did a Prowl version of this, which I didn't get, because I hate Prowl. <laughs> I, I'm sure I've made that perfectly clear in previous videos. I'm, I'm not sure what it is about Prowl. I didn't hate him in the cartoon. I just really don't like him now. Like, I've been looking at the knockoff masterpieces, and one of the ones that keeps popping up is Prowl. And I'm like, no, go away. I don't want you. No use, Max Green. You, you, you're fine. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up. So, I should be ugly, I should be wretched, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye!